Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Salatu Wassalam, Ala Rasulillah, Wa Ala Alihi, Wa Ashabihi Ajma'in, Amma Ba'd, Al Kabir Al Khamis Wa Sittun, Al Jidaru, Awa Al Jidal, Wa Al Mira'a, Wa Al Ladaddu, Wa Bukala Al Quda'a. The author says, Major Sin number 64, the following things, which are sometimes synonymous, sometimes a bit different, but in most cases are normally connected, one way or another. And these following things are, he says, al jidal He says, it is to debate, it is to argue, it is to be excessively and extremely prone to being argumentative, along with not caring how one is victorious in an argument or a debate. In other words, swaying from the truth, just to win. Being argumentative excessively, extremely, and having an insatiable passion and desire to win, even, that is, even if that's through lying, behaving in a certain way, cheating, hiding information, playing around with the facts just to win. He says, last but not least, وَوَكَلَا الْقُضَاءَ he says, and listen to the little translation, he says, agents of the judge, to be an agent of the judge. We'll read here in the footnotes what's meant here, uh, the muhaqqiq, he says, humul muhamun al yawm. He says, today, that's equated to lawyers. He says, lawyers. He says, wal muradu huna man yukhasimu minhum bil batil, aw an al mubtilin. ويترتب على خصومته أكل أموال الناس بغير حق وهذا الصنف يدخل في عموم قوله تعالى ولا تكن للخائنين خصيما ولكثرة هؤلاء فيهم ذمم الناس قديما ولكثرة هؤلاء فيهم ذمهم الناس قديما وقد صور على الدين الكندي حالهم في بلاد الشام في وقت القرن الثامن الهجري بقوله ثم ذكر بعض الأبيات وهذه المهنة غلب عليها الحرام لشيوع الظلم وكثرة الخيانة وقلة الديانة ولدخول القوانين الوضعية التي يستخدمها المحامون في دفاعهم وهي بالجملة حلال بشروط بينتها في كتاب مفرد فيها ومطبوع قديم بعنوان المحامات تاريخها في النظم وموقف الشريعة الإسلامية منها أو طيب قال تاريخها في في طيب إلى أن قال وقد سرقه بعض طيب طيب إلى آخر كلامه he says here uh, ولا بد هنا من التنبيه على أمرين أو على أمرين مهمين الأول حد المراء هو كل اعتراض على كلام الغير بظهار خلل فيه إما في اللفظ وإما في المعنى وإما في قصد المتكلم والمنهي عنه فيما لم يكن متعلقا بأمور الدين فالسكوت عنه نجاء ومحمود وفيه ترك للفضول وأما فيما يتعلق بالدين فله أحكام مبسوطة في غير هذا المحل وأما الجدال فعبارة عن قصد إفحام الغير وتعجيزه وتنقيسه بالقدح في كلامه ونسبته إلى القصور والجهل فيه فإن كان عن ترفع وإظهار للعلم والفضل والتهجم على الغير بإظهار نقصه فهو حرام وهو شهوة نفسية باطنية لا يسلم منها إلا من رحم الله والآخر يلحق بالخصومة بالباطل الخوض في الباطل وما أكثره هذه الأيام وهو الكلام في المعاصي كحكاية أحوال النساء ومجالس الفساق أو مجالس الفساق ومقاماتهم وتنعم الأغنياء وتجبر الملوك ومرامسهم والمذمومة وأحوالهم المكروهة فإن كل ذلك مما لا يحل الخوض فيه وهو هرام قال ابن النحاس في تنبيه الغافلين ثم ذكر الصفحة في سياق تعداده الكبائر ومنها المراء في القرآن قال وقد قال بعضهم المراء بالباطل مطرقا من الكبائر وعد الحافظ الذهبي إلى آخره uh, The footnotes here they say That these uh, people here, wukala al qudā, literally translated as agents of the judge. He says, meaning today lawyers. He says here, this occupation, being a lawyer, being a representative of the law, he says, in most cases is haram. In most cases, not in all cases, but in most cases. 
And that is because, he says, It's abundant oppression in the courts and in the legal systems. Not all the time, but he says abundant. It's all over the place. Zulm. He then says, and also, He says, abundant deception, treachery and trickery. A white lie. I have to get my client off. Twist, you play with this, you so on and so forth. You have friends, you have connections. And then this goes on. He says, He says, and the people having very little religious identity. A very religious care of a very, very, very small, very minute care for religion, if any at all. He says another reason why in most cases haram, because of the man-made laws that lawyers have to use in their defense, in their defense or their prosecution. He says, so in brief, with certain conditions, it's halal to be a lawyer. With conditions, he said. But it isn't absolutely halal, nor is it absolutely haram. And he goes on to mention a book that he wrote a while back regarding this topic that he wrote just on the ruling of being an attorney, being a lawyer. Khairan, inshallah. Uh, then he goes on to mention a few points, uh, a few important pointers or points. The first is the definition of some of these terms. Al-Mira, Al-Jidal, and Al-Khawdu fil batil Which in English, sometimes they're consistent and parallel and other times they're different. So it says here, Al-Jidal. The word Jidal in Arabic and in English, it can mean something good or something bad. We can sit down um, and have a munaqasha. I mean, you can debate over an issue, mas'ala ilmiya, with the proper respect for each other. I'm not trying to just beat him just for myself, to my ego. He's not trying to embarrass me or play me just for his ego. We both want the haq, we both want the truth. So we sit down as two students of knowledge. Talk, debate, kada, 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 kada. I read this, call it Fulan, Imam Mukhari, so on and so forth, to reach a conclusion. To reach a conclusion. So this is what we call it as a munakasha. But linguistically, it's a debate. A debate. And a debate, also linguistically, is also called jidal. It can be a jidal. Everybody understand this? And a munakasha, even in the munakasha, with that term that you use, it could be positive or it could be negative. There's some munakasha, which is munakasha ilmiya. And then we could also have a debate or a little uh, verbal fight in which you could get a little ugly. Everybody understand this? Well, I lie or you lie. Or I'm trying to embarrass you or you're trying to embarrass me. We're not trying to get to the haq anymore. Everybody understand this? What's important, al-maqsud, al-muhim, is that if you have a debate, sometimes it's halal, sometimes it's haram. Sometimes it's mandatory to have a debate. Sometimes it's recommended, sometimes it can be disliked, other times it can be totally impermissible. Everybody understand this? Then it says, wal mira, And the word mira, he says here, uh, is to, Bismillah. He says, and al mira is for basically looking for loopholes and inconsistencies in someone's speech. It's to pick apart someone's argument. And that which is prohibited from this is that which pertains to the deen. That which pertains to the deen. Trying to find one ayah and turn it against another ayah. Trying to find one hadith and looking for an inconsistency, so on and so forth. I'm saying as a 10b, obviously excluded from this is that which is done for educational purposes. And we're studying that hadith together. And I say, for in qila. For in qila. What about this? One hadith says this, one hadith, what are you going to say about Bakr? Not for the purpose of finding inconsistency and contradiction, but to train a student to have a strong mind. That before you go and say something to someone, you have to know the truth inside and outside. Everybody understand this? And you have to know what's going to be said, what's going to be brought up. Everybody clear on this? But for a person to sit down and do this with the Quran, to make mira with the Quran, and to strike the ayat against each other, and find inconsistencies. One verse Allah clearly says, He doesn't oppress anybody. And another ayah, Allah says that. Uh, we wrote upon them, we decreed upon them. Everybody understand this? We created these actions, so on and so forth. So I can all send people to the hellfire and clearly say that he decreed for them and performed those wicked actions. Okay? That's kufr. And that's misguidance. Not understanding, interpreting, and having the proper huh, faham of the kitab and of the sunnah. Many people, they mix these things together and it's not. Sometimes it's haram, clearly, and other times it may be mandatory. Because it's from fiqh fi din Understanding the religion Khairan inshallah He then says uh, And a person just being excessive in argumentation 
It's one thing we sit and we talk and we debate, but a person always wants to debate and always wants to fight and argue and talk about somebody else and defend all of the time. And in most cases, the human being, no matter how pious or how righteous, he's not going to be free from some type of ego. He's not going to be free from some type of competitive nature and spirit. Some men, they have more than others. But in every human being, there's a percentage. In every human being, there's a what? There's a percentage. So anyone who's ever played sports or organized sports, you know that if you want to be a champion, you have a desire to win. You have a passion to win. You losing the game is something that you're not even thinking about. And you're willing to do whatever it takes physically to push yourself mentally to win the game. So if you have a competitive nature and competitive spirit, it can also, and it will also carry on to knowledge. I want to win. I don't want to look like a fool. I don't want to be played and embarrassed. I want to win. So I'm going to do what I have to do to break you down and improve my argument. So if a person is naturally too much, too heavy in this all of the time, it's always about me, 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 my statement, my statement, something's wrong. Something's what? Something's wrong, let alone... Due to the fact that the competitive nature and spirit will sometimes push him to exaggerate. Or sometimes it will push him to even lie blatantly. Why the other be lie. Or to hide information that his opponent could, be, could use. Everybody understand this? And obviously, this does not pertain to you having a greed for knowledge and you wanting to spread the truth and give da'wah to the non-Muslims and defend Islam and show the inconsistencies of the da'wah of the kuffar of the Christians who attack Islam, so on and so forth. Or even among Muslims, Abu Bakr always comes to me, Sheikh, Sheikh, this, what about that, what about that, Katha, Fulan, Fulan, Fulan. It's not necessarily a bad thing, as long as it's done in the what? The boundaries of the Sunnah. Is that we're trying to seek the Haq. He's trying to learn, he's trying to sharpen his blade, trying to get as much ilm as he can. Everybody understand this? That's not a bad thing for a person to be naturally what? Hadis. To be diligent upon what? al masain Everybody clear in this? A lot of brothers, they think that that's what this means. Is that if we always, every time we sit down and we study and we go over Masail, we talk about Qurtubi, the Ahkam, the ruling on this, what's the ruling on that, what's the ruling on Kadha, what'd you read? That's Shaytayyib. That's praiseworthy. Everybody understand that? And it doesn't mean we just have to sit down and say, oh, let's read the Qal al Sharh, Qal al Sheikh Fulan. Just read the Fatwa. No. We actually want to know what's going on. And we want to reach the Night Ta'ala, the level of being independent and understanding independently. Nothing is wrong with that. So we don't mix, huh? And last but not least, he says, And we explained that. What's meant by that is, uh, he says, lawyers and attorneys, in most cases, who have to lie, who have to exaggerate, who have to cheat, who have to deceive. He says, this is a major sin. This is a what? This is a major sin. Uh, he then says here, um, and the people, he says, a very long time ago, They've dispraised these people and they spoke about these people. And you'll find different narrations of many of the Muslims of the past, the second century, third century, fourth century. They would totally censure someone who worked with the judge. And many of the great ulama, they refused to be judges, even though sometimes they were forced. Because they knew that once you entered into this realm, you were automatically collect, uh, connected to politicians. And you became a coin in their pouch or in their pocket, one way or another. So they would run and they would flee from it. Let alone the fact that it will busy someone from seeking ilm, especially a science which is as greedy and demanding as hadith, which demands hours and hours and hours and hours and hours out of every day, reading, studying, memorizing, and teaching. How can you do that if you have the stress and the responsibility of being a judge? Khairan, inshallah. Um, so the author he then says, Qala Allah Ta'ala, wa mina nasi man yu'ajibaka qawluhu fil hayati dunya. وَيُشْهِدُ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا فِي قَلْبِهِ وَهُوَ أَلَدُ الْخِصَامِ وَإِذَا تَوَلَّى سَعَى فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُفْسِدَ فِيهَا وَيُهْلِكَ الْحَرْثَ وَالنَّسَلِ الآيات وقال تعالى ما ضربوه لك إلا جدلا بل هم قوم خصمون وقال تعالى إن الذين يجادلون في آيات الله بغير سلطان أتاهم إن في صدورهم إلا كبر ما هم ببالغيه وقال تعالى ولا تجادلوا أهل الكتاب إلا بالتي هي أحسن the author, he starts off his discussion and proof that this is a major sin. Uh, his proofs and his evidence is by saying, and before we go that far, last but not least, he says what's included in this also is that which is called al-khawdu fil batil, is to idly speak about falsehood. Idly speaking about falsehood. 
There lies no doubt included in this is the news, sports, statistics, uh, blogs, forums, websites, chat groups, uh, any other word or term that you want to use. He mentions here in the footnotes, he says, such as talking about sins, talking about women, how beautiful Fulana is, how wonderful Fulana looks, how charming Fulana is. He says here, and the cities and the circles of the Fusak, the fun that we had, the things that we smoked, the things that we drunk, we laughed, he fell, we made fun of him, so on and so on and so forth. Talking about how the status of the people. He says here, uh, and the luxury of the rich, the rich and the wealthy, the rich and the famous. He says, and the different tyrants and the different rulers and the different leaders and all of the different things like this that are clearly bad and looked down upon Islamically. So just stop and think about that now. There are how many programs, how many videos can you find on YouTube about the luxurious people and how they live and the millions that they spend, the billions that they spend, gold cell phones, gold toilet, toilet bowls, and the list goes on. That's entertainment. That's the whole industry of entertainment, of talking about uh, this leader, this person who has so much wealth that he can buy a what? Gold cell phone, solid gold. Everybody understand this? And other things like this, which is clear extravagance. Tayyip, very unfortunate. I was watching a documentary some time back, uh, and it was talking about a, a Middle Eastern country uh, and how you know, filthy, rich, and wealthy the country had become just in a short span of years, okay? Uh, and some of the different novelties that many of the wealthy people would buy, the cars, the you know, ridiculous, ridiculous things. So it was a very interesting comment. It said in the footnotes, it says, with all of this money, all of this wealth, yani loads and loads, globs of wealth, he says these countries, or this country, talking specifically, he says they haven't produced an Oxford or Cambridge yet. He says the things that they buy, the things that they build, the wonders, the marvels that they have, he says why can't all that money be spent on something which is actually beneficial, something which is groundbreaking, remarkable, that helps the world. So just stop and think about that now. Then you look at the UK, for example. We don't get into the history of the UK, but let's talk about the UK. All right? No one is going to deny in their right mind the different institutions of education that is established there. There's no doubt about that. And then you look at some other countries and the amount of wealth that they have. Tell me one prestigious university that's there. Prestigious, let alone a university that's spread far and wide. Rather, you'll find people from this country or other countries traveling to the UK to study in that university. So this is a very important concept, let alone the commenter he said about military, science, medicine, and the list goes on. Okay, so that's very unfortunate. Okay, and the same applies to the Muslims here as well in New York City. How much money there actually is, how much money we collectively have, but what things do we actually have? And what are our, what are our priorities? A fancy, beautiful masjid, which is alhamdulillah, as long as it's not against the sunnah, that's another ruling, but it's just having a nice masjid, that's nothing wrong with that. But what's more important, the gold, the calligraphy, the beautiful, luxurious things, or the library of the masjid? Or the actual masjid itself, the teaching, the reciters, the imams, the khatibs, what takes precedence? And it lies no doubt, many of us, we focus on the formalities. We focus on the outward beauty, but it's the same ignorance, same bid'ah, same lack of whatever you want to call it in the masjid. But it's a huge, gigantic center. That's spotless, you can eat off the floor, but it's the same ignorance, the same political greed by the, the people who run the masjid. They fight over it. That's very sad. That's very sad. So the Muslims, they have wealth. Allah gave them wealth, but we, what do we look after? Education. Or go even deeper than that. Security of the masjid. Not a brother, a couple older brothers with vests on outside in the parking lot and a couple walkie-talkies, but having an actual trained professional security force. We don't spend money on things like that. And we want to imitate the kuffar as if we imitate them in everything except for that which is beneficial. That's very sad when you live overseas. They want to be like the kuffar in every aspect except for that thing which is actually the reason why the kuffar became so powerful and dominant, such as education, science, exploration. Everybody understand this? Travel. Everybody knows the British Navy. That was the cause behind the UK and specifically Britain, Great Britain taking over all of that land. It's because of their navy. So people, they want to be like the kings in Britain, the luxury, the crown, the diamonds, the rubies, and the jewels, but they don't want to spend any money upon the navy. 
That's sad. All right? Or espionage. And the list goes on. You go on and on, example after example. And you can apply even to our communities as minorities here in New York City, on the East Coast, wherever you go. We spend millions and millions of dollars on certain things. And the most important, vital things, we don't put in a penny. That's a, that's, that's a joke. And that's one of the reasons why we are still very, very much so behind. Khairan, inshallah. So the author, he says, uh, he mentions several ayat. The first is from Surah Al-Baqarah, in which Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, he says, he says, there are some people whose statement you may be amazed by. It may be amazing to you. Huh? And this person, he swears what's in his heart. Allah says, but in actuality, he's aladul khisam. He's prone and driven to argumentation and debate. He's a liar. He's a person who behaves ignorantly to prove his point. Uh, then he mentions another ayah here from Surah Al-Zukhruf. Allah says, ما ضربوه لك إلا جدل Oh, he says, إلا جدل بل هم قوم خصيمون He says to the Prophet Wasallam that the only thing they can do for you, O Muhammad, the Meccans, the pagans, is debate with you and argue with you. That's it. Tell Allah to send any angels. Tell Allah to give us rivers out of the earth. Tell Allah this. Tell Allah that. Ask Allah that. What happened? What happened? That's the only thing they can do. They can't listen to the Quran. They can't listen to the message of Tawheed. They cannot appreciate the message of Islam. The only thing they can do is try to throw in her arguments towards you. Allah says, Belhum qawmun khasimun. That's the best thing that they can do. Uh, he then mentions the next ayah here from Surah Ghafir, in which Allah Azza wa Jal says, Inna الَّذِينَ يُجَادِلُونَ فِي آيَاتِ اللَّهِ بِغَيْرِ سُلْطَانٍ أَتَاهُمْ He says, the people who argue and debate about Allah's ayat without any hujja. The sultan here means hujja. Without any hujja أَتَاهُمْ No proof, no evidence, no authority. Allah says, in fi sudurihim illa kibrun. He says that is only because of the pride in their chest. That's only because of the pride of their chest to argue and to debate falsely without the proper knowledge. Uh, he then mentions here uh, the ayah from Surah Al-Ankubut in which Allah Azza wa Jalla says, do not debate with the people of Ahl Kitab illa bilati ha'asan. Excess in the most excellent manner. In the most excellent manner. Don't just try to find fault in the Bible and in Christianity. And they come back and they find fault in the Quran. And they find inconsistencies in the Qur'an, just cutting and pasting from their scriptures. That's not billatihi asin, because they can do the same. And in 2017, you go online, they have done the same. You'll find a video in which a guy quotes from the Qur'an directly, and from Sayyid al-Bukhari, and he presents some type of inconsistency. This is reality, okay? So that's not the scholarly way of debating and what? Calling them to the haq, let alone to vanquish they're false colors. That's not the scholarly way to cut and to paste. Khairan, inshallah. The author then says, وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِنَّ أَبْغَضَ الرِّجَالِ إِلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَىٰ الْأَلَدُ الْخَصِمُ He says, the Prophet also says, the most hated men to Allah are those who are prone to argumentation and debate. These are the most hated men to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this hadith is in the Sahihain, the narration of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. He then says, وَرَوَى رَجَاءَ أَبُوْ يَحْيَىٰ صَاحِبُ الصَّقَطْ وَهُوَ لَيِّنٌ عَنْ يَحْيِي بِنَّ أَبِي كَثِيرٍ عَنْ أَبِي سَلَمَ عَنْ أَبِي هُرَيْرَ وَرَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مَنْ جَادَلَ فِي خُصُومَةٍ مِغَيْرِ عِلْمٍ لَمْ يَزَلْ فِي صَخَةِ اللَّهِ حَتَّى يَنْزِعْ وَرَوَى حَجَّاجِ بْنُ دِنَارِ وَهُوَ صَدُوقٌ عَنْ أَبِي غَالِبٍ عَنْ أَبِي أُمَامَةٍ رَضِي اللَّهُ عَنْهُ عَنْ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَقَالَ مَا ضَلَّ قَوْمٌ بَعْدَ هُدًى كَانُوا عَلَيْهِ إِلَّا أُوتُوا الْجَدَلَ ثُمَّ تَلَا مَا ضَرَبُوهُ لَكَ إِلَّا جَدَلًا بَلْ هُمْ قَوْمٌ خَصِيمُونَ وَيَرْوَى عَنِ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَنَّهُ قَالَ إِنَّ أَخْوَفَ مَا أَخَافُ عَلَى أُمَّتِي زَلَّةُ عَالِمٍ وَجِدَالُ مُنَافِقٍ بِالْقُرْآنِ وَالدُّنْيَا تُقَطِّعْ عَنَاقَهُمْ رَاهُ يَزِيدُ بِنِ مِزْيَادٍ عَنْ مُجَاهِدٍ عَنْ إِبْنِ يَوْمَرَاهُ وَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ الْمِرَاءُ فِي الْقُرْآنِ كُفْرٌ وعن ابن عمر رضي الله عنهما عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال ما خاصم في باطن ويعلم لم يزل في سخة الله حتى ينزع وفي لفظ فقد باء بغضب من الله أخرج أبو داود ويروى عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال أخف ما أخاف على أمتي كل منافق عليم اللسان وعنه صلى الله عليه وسلم أنه قال الحياء والعي شعبتان من الإيمان والبذاء والبيان شعبتان من النفاق the author then quotes several ahadith. We'll try to summarize some of them. The first of those ahadith, uh, as we mentioned, uh, the most hated men to Allah. And then he mentions a very interesting narration. He says here, uh, oh, before that, uh, he mentions one here from Abu Hurairah. He says, anyone who argues and debates about someone's property, someone's wealth, someone's honor, some, some type of issue, without knowledge, 
he will be in the anger of Allah Azza wa until he stops, until he refrains. He mentions another narration here from Abi Umama uh, radiallahu anhu, the famous report in which the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa said, anytime when people went astray after they were guided, it's because they were given jadal, they were given argumentation. They began to fight, they began to argue, they began to lie, they began to slander, they began to have suspicion. And this is the reason behind them going astray. And then he quoted uh, the ayah that we previously read. He mentions another narration here. Um, uh, he says here that uh, it's narrated, the Prophet Sallallahu said, the thing that I fear most upon my nation, following things. Number one, Zalla to alim, he says, is the mistake of a scholar. Wajidalu munafiqin, and is the fighting and the arguing of a hypocrite regarding the Quran. Someone who isn't a believer and talking and debating about the Quran. He says, in the dunya, he says, worldly luxuries to qatir wa anakakum, which will snap your necks. Just stop and think about this hadith and just apply it to today. Khairan, inshallah. Then he says, the Prophet also said, Al mira'u fil Qurani kufrun. To argue and to debate falsely about the Qur'an, he says, is kufr. Uh, he then mentions the narration of Ibn Umar, that the Prophet ﷺ says, Man fi batilin, He who debates and fights over some falsehood, and he knows, will continue to be in the wrath and the anger of Allah until he ceases, as we previously mentioned, collected by Imam Abu Dawood. He then mentions another narration that the Prophet ﷺ said, The thing that I fear most upon my nation is every munafiq who is eloquent in his speech, a good talker. But in actuality, he's a munafiq. Uh, and he mentions another narration towards the end of the chapter. We we'll suffice ourselves with that. We ask Allah Azza wa to protect us from this major sin and protect all of the Muslims from this major sin. Wallahu ta'ala alam. Jazakumullahu khairan.